Hi right, guys, I swear I am making videos. I've just been really quite busy at the shop. Uh, today I'm headed to Integrity RV over in Mesa on Main Street. Uh, it's, yeah, they have a 2004 Winnebago Vector or Itasca Horizon. The uh, battery charger inverter is not working. Uh, this is a dimensions inverter. And I, I've already troubleshot it, it's bad. We're gonna change it out, put a, uh, a Xantrax Freedom Combi in. And so we'll just do a quick uh, go through on that. So let's go find out. Well, I take that back. This is uh, 06 Itasca Horizon. Okay. So I went back and used these dimension inverters for a couple of years. And then dimension inverters stopped making these inverters. Now I did already troubleshoot all this uh, a few days ago. I did have 110 power coming in. And I had 110 power going out. But the breaker did get tripped. That was feeding power to here. And once it gets 110 power in, it does start to ramp up the charge and all of a sudden it just kicks out and stops charging. It doesn't invert either. And these, like I said, they aren't even really made anymore. I guess theoretically you could tear it apart and rebuild it, but then you're still stuck with a 13 year old rebuilt inverter. And this, like I tell people, this is the heart of your RV. Without this, you don't really have a functional RV. You just have a box. So here it is right here. Now this is an inverter just like uh, your Magnum or your Xantrex. So it's a battery charger and an inverter in one. Its primary function is your battery charger. So it gets 110 power, charges your batteries. In general, these uh, dimension inverters were fine. Their downside was they're a lot like uh, a golf cart battery charger. If the batteries are too low, I think below 10 volts, <laughs> it, won't, it won't charge the batteries. So you'd need a battery charger just to get your battery charger to work, which is a very frustrating thing. Now, ideally, you could still start your engine, and your engine would charge your house your house batteries, and then this would kick in. But on this Freightliner chassis, Freightliner put a logic onto the auxiliary starts or charge solenoid right there. So Freightliner's power to Winnebago uh, cuts off the charge solenoid from working if the house batteries pull too much voltage away from the engine batteries. So even your auxiliary start switch won't work. It was the, it was dumb. I just changed out this uh, inverter. The new inverter doesn't use these uh, clamp down terminals. I'll have to put ring terminals on. And the new inverter is going to have to have a battery temperature sensor installed. And then I'll have to use the existing data cable to replace the remote panel. It's a lot of work just to put, replace this guy. So let me go ahead and disconnect everything. Right here is actually the uh, feed to the, uh, ba the inverter. So that battery cable's already disconnected right there. That's the fuse for it. All right, and yeah, I tested it, it was good. Let's get this thing ripped out, rebuilt, get done. It is always best to label your Romexes coming in and out because you can damage all inverters. If you put input power on the output side, you'll burn them up. Or if you reverse polarity, you're uh, 12 volt. That's an expensive thing to do. Don't do that. So I'm just getting the last connections disconnected here. Got the 110 disconnected. That's a temperature sensor to the battery. Now, Tiffin also used this inverter manufacturer for a little bit. And quickly stopped using them too. So I think that might be an indication of their support or their problems. I couldn't tell you, but this is a 2006 and it's 2019, so at least it lasted 13 years. So everything should be disconnected at this point. Let's do the, uh, the check. Didn't spark. All right, so that's off. 
let's get this thing pulled out. There was just a 716 to uh, I'll have to uh, probably drill holes in the new inverter to make sure that those holes line up. I can't ever be that lucky, right? And of course, here's the new inverter. It's a uh, Xantrax uh, Freedom Combi 458 2010 12 volt. Uh, this is a pretty standard guy. They've been pretty reliable. I haven't say I won't say I don't replace them. Obviously, I replace them all the time. But they've been using these for about 20 years. They haven't really changed their design at all. So let's get this thing unboxed. I won't review it. I'll just get it set up and put it back in. So here it is. It's a standard looking guy right there. The biggest difference between the, the I think the, there's about three different models of this. You have a single input, a double input, a single input, and a double output. So this is just single in, single out. There are no breakers right here, so there's no sub panel right there. The sub panel for the output is going to be on the inside already. You'll notice the old inverter didn't have any breakers on it either. Here, this is your battery temperature sensor. It has to be installed so it knows the temperature of the batteries when it's charging. So that's going to be honestly probably the hardest part of the job is I have to route that over the engine to the other side to the batteries on a tray. And we're on dirt here, so it'll be a dirty job. Whew. All right, let's get this thing mocked up and see if it'll fit. Well, I don't know, guys. Sometimes you are just that lucky. <laughs> These do actually just line up. So thanks a lot. Dimensions, you use the same mounting holes as uh, Antrax. So uh, that's a big part of the job. I don't have to worry about changing around. I just have to get everything hooked back up. I need to put some ring terminals on these battery cables. Uh, these say that they're one aught uh, cables right there. So I did get some one aught ring terminals here. Uh, these battery cables I can't shorten up anymore just because they're barely long enough anyways as they are. So I just have to put these on and then uh, crimp them on. I've honestly found this terminal crimper right here to be the best uh, crimper to crimp on these term ring terminals. And I got a nice hammering surface right there to hammer them against. Uh, the big uh, cable ca crimpers that look like bolt cutters. I've had mixed results with those holding these ring terminals on very well. But we'll see if we can't make this work. So what we're gonna do, where are we at here, is feed this guy on. <clears throat> Sometimes it's easier to twist it on. Alright. Get our terminal clamp crimper right here. Put it through, line everything up. And then get my hammer. And just start beating away at it. special factory torque settings right there so we'll wiggle it make sure it's not loose everything looks pretty good it doesn't just crimp the top it actually wedges the bottom of it too so it crimps both sides so do that on the negative and then we'll put this together now some people might say these should be soldered in place using like a propane torch and some actual solder I've done that but what I've found is that when you solder a big cable like this, the solder wicks up past the insulation quite a bit and it becomes very inflexible. It becomes a very, uh, just becomes a rod. And so you can't bend it if you need to. So I find that to be a bad idea, especially when you need flexibility. So I got the inverter mounted there. Now this is a 110, I guess, appliance. Uh, 110 equipment so like all 110 equipment needs to be uh, bonded to ground 
I'm not sure how vital being bonded to ground is going to be in this application. In a mobile setting, the chassis frame itself is ground, uh, which is bonded to the ground of the actual uh, power cord. When I say that, I'm not sure how vital it is because we're just going to be bonding this cable, which goes to the chassis frame, to ground. But each one of these nuts is also on the frame and it's bonded to the same ground. So I said, I'm not sure how absolutely necessary it is, but it's there. So let's put it on. So I think these are actually 916s right here. So that's our next step is to put um, battery cables on. Red is positive, black is negative. Pretty simple. But I didn't have a lot of length for these to go behind here. So they're just going to go over the top right here. It can either come out the top or the bottom. And I don't really want sharp edges against uh, this battery cable. So we'll go out the top. So it comes with these handy covers go over the, the cables right there. That's why I say it can either go out the top or the bottom, like that. Of course, I guess it could theoretically go that way, but that doesn't help me out. Or it could go that way. That doesn't help me out either. That'll be the best is it tie all this together. And you shouldn't be setting anything on top of the inverter anyways. Definitely make sure you have all the air that you can because these get pretty hot and you need to have good airflow. So I just have to hook up the uh, 110 wiring. I'm gonna leave these covers off so it's good test points for me when I go to test it all out. Resist the urge to hook up the ground first. That way you can tuck these wires back in place. in there and then the ground wire is not in the way when you're trying to cut those wires so now I can just come back through with the ground and hook up the, the ground to there and it's all tucked back behind there if that was there it's hard to tuck those other wires back in you're welcome so this is gonna be the new remote panel for this inverter we're gonna use the existing harness so I don't have to run a new one to the middle of the coach in the hallway there. But this is a, uh, they were, or the Dimensions was using a Cat6 or Cat5 data cable. I just need to turn it into a uh, RG11, RJ11. Because uh, it does have six wires that it uses, not four. So I gotta put a new end on here and put a new end on the inside and install the panel. So to do that, I'll just cut off this end and then use a super high-tech fancy tool that I lost. That's neither super high-tech nor fancy, it's just a standard phone line crimper from Radio Shack from years ago. We'll get that put on. I got that end, I got that end cut off. I stripped back a little bit. I'm just gonna arbitrarily decide which two wires to cut off, which is gonna be orange and blue, because eight wires won't fit in a six wire connector. And then I'll use that as a guide for the other side that I put on inside. That's the old remote panel right here. Now, I'm not saying that maybe Dimensions was directly competing with uh, Xandrax or Hart at the time. I think it was Hart. But it still seems odd to me how those inverter bolts lined up perfectly. Check out this remote panel. It fits in perfectly too. So that's nice. Normally if you switch from a Magnum to a Xantrex, the panel doesn't fit. Or vice versa. You have to modify this opening because theirs are more were more square. So here's the other end of that cable right there. This is actually battery powered to the uh, dimensions cable. We don't need this anymore. We just need this data cable. So I'll cut that end off and put a put an end on. All right, so we got that wired up. Turn on the inverter. And look at that. It's doing something. And the microwave turned on. So that seems to be working. I just have to put it in place right there. But I want you to know something important. This is a data cable. This isn't a phone cable. I brought an example to kind of show you what's going on here. If we were to look at these things with uh, the tab on up on one side and the tab down on the other side. I don't know if you guys can see this focus. The wiring is in the same order, but the ends are flipped. If they were... Now the wires are 
backwards from each other. So you start with white on that side, you go with blue, and then you start with blue on that side, go to white. So you need to make sure the ends are flipped if you're making this cable. You don't want to have them the same direction or else you won't have any operation on your remote. I don't think it actually damages the system, but it won't work. And then you'll spend all, I don't know how long, troubleshooting and finding out why it doesn't work. So make sure you do that. Flip the ends. They should be backwards from each other. Hope that made sense. It's the second light that's on, so I'm charging. Okay, let's see what we're charging at. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hey, we're charging. It's much higher than I was getting before. All right, so now we've done everything. All I have to do is not run this battery temperature sensor. That's the sensor, it goes to the terminal on the battery, and then it just plugs in down here. So I have to run it uh, over there, over the top, over the top of the engine, zip tie everything up, run into the batteries and hook it up. It's pretty boring, so I won't bother showing you any of that. These are those caps are, are on. Everything's back together. Once I have this battery sensor run, I can zip tie everything up and this job is done. Now the temperature sensor is only there because uh, to properly charge a battery, you need to know its current voltage and the temperature of the battery. So that's best to have that temperature in. I, it'll work without it, but it's best to have it on there. And so we're gonna do what's best. All right, so there's a battery temperature sensor installed. I just routed it through the wall there into the compartment. And uh, right through here, I got the generator running and we're actually charging about 90 amps. So I know those batteries are bad. I don't wanna run this too long with those bad batteries because I don't wanna break my brand new inverter. So I'm gonna go ahead and probably shut this down and uh, recommend replace some batteries next all right guys well there it was swapping a uh, dimensions inverter on a Winnebago 2006 uh, horizon I guess it's an Itasca horizon to a uh, Xantrax freedom combi uh, for what are they calling this 458 I always want to say like 758 it's weird uh, nearly a direct replacement there are a little few, few things you have to do battery cables, remote panel, harness, and uh, battery sensor. And that, really easy job, right? Bye guys.